Yes, we want the woman to invite the men tonight. Yes, we want the woman to invite the men tonight. Because this is the men's program. We have a woman program and men is, the woman is getting better. You know, so we want to invite women, invite your man, your husband, your boyfriend, your fiance, whoever he is, invite him tonight. Because you're going to, he's going to be getting lots of information to keep his prostate healthy and keep his sexual health <laughs> Bless that night and give thanks and praise to the most high. We are in Ambrosia tonight. And I am here in New York again. We are in New York till the weekend. We're gonna leave. We're flying back to Grenada. Um Sunday, God give me health. Sunday, God give me health and strength. We want to thank everybody for watching. We want to thank everybody for supporting what we are doing. And we want to say that the women program is doing wonderful. And if you go to come chat with Patrick Dubs, you are going to see that um, a young lady who's doing our program didn't have a period for two years, and she and her mom is doing the program together. So if you're if you're looking at the program, just put it under the post, my dear. Two years haven't seen a period. All doctors, all gynecologists, was on the pills, was on these injections. Two years no period. And as soon as she started the 30 day program for women only, her period came. See? So that is telling us that once you put the body back in balance, automatically the body will respond to what you're doing. And that's why we are doing these programs so that people can follow. Yeah? Number one. Number two. We did a live, and I think a brother said, I said, with Mario, we said, why am, I, why am I preaching or teaching I don't answer people? That's the reason why I'm doing the programs. So I don't have to answer anybody. You know what I'm saying? You know, so when people come on my page and, 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 and say I don't answer, I, I answer as much as I can, I'm, you know, I have a busy life. You know, I can't just answer everybody. If you look at my phone, Ashanti will tell you. My phone is full of people, full of messages. Thousands of them. And that's why I'm doing these programs. So that you all don't have to call on the call me on the phone because you're all gonna learn what you're all supposed to do. So if you want, if you if you say I don't answer you, you know what I mean, and you're looking at my program and learning nothing, then you make the sense you're gonna look at my program anyway. That's you see, that's what I'm here to teach. I'm not here to preach. Mm -hmm. I'm here to teach people so that I don't have to be bombarded with phone calls. You know what I mean? You know, some a lot of people don't do that. You know what I mean? So when you're right, you have to know what you're right, you know? All right? So tonight we're gonna to talk about men's health because. A 45-year-old man, brother, was just diagnosed with prostate cancer. We are treating a 47-year-old brother with prostate cancer. We are treating a 48, 48 and 49-year-old brother with prostate cancer. Huh? We are getting calls every day with brothers, 52 years old, with prostate cancer. Uh, prostate enlargement. We just had a brother put under the post a while ago that his PSA is 20. And you have to do a biopsy. So we're going to teach you now when a biopsy is important for you men and when it's not important. You understand? Because the biopsy can also disturb your cancer. So the biopsy is not your best choice. You follow me. You know what I mean? Because that's what they know. Right? There are different therapies that the medical system use, battery therapy, surgery, radiation, and also chemotherapy. You see what I'm saying? Now, or they remove your prostate gland. That's what they do. They remove the prostate, or they will put you on what we call hormone therapy. They give you Lupron, Prosca, injections. The cancer is very smart in your prostate gland after a while, because after a while, your, your, your cancer will, be, will, 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 will become very smart. And then the chemo don't work again. So we're going to teach you, men, how to prevent. I talk about prevention. Prevent prostate cancer. Prevent B BPH. <coughs> being in prostatic, prostatic hypoplasia. Prevent prostatitis. Prevent ED. Prevent impotence. You know what I mean? By taking care of the man's reproductive system. So the first place we're going to go 
is right to the bowels and show you why you get prostate cancer long term. We're here. I'm always going to come over here now. Now, when a man sits on the toilet bowl, right over here, see, come over here, comes Shante, see over here? See what it says? Come on a little bit more. Prostate. See what it says here? Prostate. Prostate right here. Prostate. Uterus. Genital glands. Come over here. Blood sugar balance. Over here. Bladder. Testicles. Subspinal disturbances. Now, let's go to the prostate gland. Now, when a doctor pushes his hand in a man's rectum, he feels the prostate gland. And he, the doctor, can tell you if the prostate is mushy or hard. Hard is no good, too mushy is no good either. Now, what happens to the prostate gland is when lots of men go to the bathroom and they sit on the toilet bowl, they don't elevate their feet. So once your feet is not elevated, Lots of the waste products come over here, right here, into the sigmoid colon, and it seeps into the sigmoid, and automatically, long term, when you get older, all the waste starts to seep into your prostate gland. So you must elevate your feet as a man when sitting on the toilet to prevent your prostate from becoming contaminated. That is the first thing you have to learn. And I mean, because once the prostate gland is contaminated, you are going to get prostate cancer long term. Or you either get sigmoid carcinoma, cancer of the sigmoid colon, or you get hemorrhoids, or you get what we call piles in the Caribbean, or you get what we call polyps in the sigmoid colon. Once you don't elevate your feet, because look at the curve over here. See the curve? One the waste is coming down to the, from the descendant colon, and it hit the sigmoid. One that feet is not elevated, if you don't squat, properly, you're going to contaminate your prostate gland long term. We have that on, we have that on track, right brother? Yes. Right. So let's go over here. Oh man. Are we going to, wonderful, wonderful. You're going to teach the men tonight. Prostate cancer and BPH prevention and treatment. So we're going to, we're going to go to a little fast tonight. Prostate gland, prostate cancer. What is the prostate gland? Your prostate gland is a walnut gland that is what? It is sitting right under the ureter that carries a urine, and it is not part of the urinary system, but because of where it is located, it can give you trouble in the urine, in the urinary system. So because your prostate is where it is located, right under the urethra, because it is not part of your urinary system, but because of where it is located in us men, it can cause us to have troubles in the urinary system too. It could squeeze the urethra and cause you to have a stoppage of water, like we call it in Grenada, or no urine can come to the penis or the bladder. See, the bladder over here. I want the men to learn, and young brothers, young brothers who's coming up 20 years and over, learn, because you're going to have troubles in the prostate long term, and now you are dying on getting prostate cancer at age 40 and 45 and 48. Never used to happen before. So we're going to teach you men because black men, look at right over here. In 1999, there were an estimated 179,000 cases of prostate cancer with 37,000 deaths in the United States alone, in America only. And mostly all these men was men of African descent living in the West. Now, look at the cancer right over here. See where it's at? Got the cancer right there. Now, when the cancer starts to grow in your prostate gland, you have to know how high your PSA is. Because the higher your PSA is, the more active the cancer is in your prostate gland. The cancer is in a capsule. Capsule over here. When the cancer starts to grow out of the prostate gland, the cancer leaves the prostate and also compresses the urethra. You follow me? And that's the reason why you can't pee your urine, and that's the reason why you cannot, you cannot, you see, you have, you have blood in the, in, the, in, in the urine also, because the cancer starts affecting the prostate, and your prostate gland is very significant 
in your sexual health, because we want, we, we, we don't want to go through all the vast dividends where the, where the sperm go up and come back down into the vast dividends coming to your penis. But this gland is very significant in us men because it secretes a prostatic fluid and it sends the fluid into the man's testicles so that the man could have what we call good sperm velocity. So when you lose the prostate gland, in no way you're going to have those sperm. You understand? You become impotent too. So don't lose it, men. I'm talking to the young brothers today. You all can kill no vagina now. Let's go up. Let's look at prostate cancer. Look at right over here. Now, once the cancer gets into the prostate gland, it starts to affect the prostate gland by growing in number. And once the cancer starts growing, it affects the man's urinary system, but it also affects the man's sexual health also. You understand? So, look at the penis right here. We talked about the vast dividends. The sperm have to go up and come back down in all these tubes and come back into the penis. And the prostate is the gland that does all these things for us men. So it is very significant to prevent prostate cancer huh, and save your prostate gland and save your sexual health. Because once you take out your prostate gland, you are dead. Like Lazarus, you can't come back alive. You know what I mean? Wonderful. So let's go. We're going to go a little, a little faster today. Risk factors, age, race, black men, and nobody can doubt that. Black men is more prone to getting prostate cancer than any other race. That's factual. They cannot doubt that either. Family history or a genetic predisposition of getting prostate cancer. Reproductive factors, like when you have STDs, you have gonorrhea, you get syphilis, you have all these STDs that could have that can affect your prostate long term. So reproductive factors also is a cause of prostate troubles long term. Dietary factors, lots of fats, lots of meat, lots of, lots of flesh, chicken, cheese, eggs, milk, beef, kill the prostate long term. And, they, and now doctors are telling us that, that these foods, that these flesh foods kill the prostate long term. Yeah, they have no life in these foods. Screening procedures. Grade 1 to 5. The medical system go by grading the prostate. 1, grade 1 to 5 is 1, well differentiated to 5, undifferentiated cells. And they have a glycine score of 2, 1.1. Glycine score of 5 or 10, 5.5. Talk to your doctor or talk to your, talk, talk to your, your urologist. Stage in 2, stage A. The tumor have a low glycine score. And A2, the tumor presents a higher Gleason score eh, and possesses capacity for what? For moving. Metastasis is called, uh, uh, means moving from a different place to the next. Stage B, stage B1. Your tumor in your prostate is confined to one lobe of the prostate gland. B1. B2, that tumor in your prostate involves both lobes of the prostate gland now getting ready to move out of the prostate gland. You have to prevent that. State C, C1, evidence of extension, meaning that it's coming to extend it out of the prostate now. C2, the tumor producing bladder obstruction now, meaning that you cannot go to the bathroom to urinate because the tumor is too big in the prostate gland. You have to put a catheter in your penis. State D, metastatic disease means the, the cancer is going if from the prostate into the bloodstream and keep moving and get what the one means it get into the nodes lymph node involvement now and once you get into the lymph nodes it's going to go into your liver going to your bones too the two distance metastatic involvement meaning cancer is all in your bones so you men or us men have to prevent it from happening to us follow me follow me we're going to look at a few herbs here that help the prostate gland all right, let's look at that. Let's look at saw palmetto. We're going to talk about that. White sage, sting and nettle, colonzonia, corn silk, hydrangea, zinc, and cleavers. We're going to talk about those. Prostate cancer. Now, this is for, this here is for prostate enlargement, BPH. BPH means B9 prostatic hyperplasia. Means you have an enlarged prostate. It's not cancerous, but you can't pee because it's enlarged. Eh? Wonderful. This one over here is prostate cancer. Let's look at some 
treatment. Vitamin E, the dry vitamin E, not the, not, the, not the gel vitamin E, has shown to inhibit cancer growth in human cells as well as cell culture studies. Studies, not particular studies, says that. MCP, it prevents the spread of prostate cancer by inhibiting the binding ability for cancer cells. They don't tell you about that. Come from tangerines and oranges and, 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 and grapefruits. CoQ10, lipoprotein, dry, dry vitamin E, 400 IU per day, aged garlic, zinc, specs. This is important. They banned this. FDA banned it. Why they banned it? Because it was fixing prostate cancer. They banned specs. But I'll show you where they get the specs now. Betaplex, 60 drops daily, and men's multivitamin and what we call holy immune. Let's go over here. Don't say too fast. Now, when a man go to the doctor, the doctor take a PSA. And a PSA is like a cancer marker of the prostate gland. Follow me. Prostatic specific antigen test. Antigen is a protein. Now, when you go to the doctor and he checks your prostate, your PSA is supposed to be 0, 0.0 to 4.0. That's the numbers we men PSA is supposed to be. Now, once you go and you check your doctor and he does a test and your PSA says 5.0, your doctor will become concerned and he would want to do what you call a biopsy to see if there is cancer in the prostate gland. We can talk about that in a while. 5.0 to 30.0 if there is cancer in your prostate gland. That cancer around these numbers over here is confined to your prostate. It is not out of the prostate yet. I want men to follow me. Women teach all your husband because a lot of Jamaican men die from prostate cancer because they don't go and get a prostate check. You understand? Grenadians are dying from prostate cancer to Grenadian men also. Lots of Caribbean men are dying from prostate cancer at an early age, man. Listen. 0 0.0, 4.0 is good. 5.0 if, if, you, if you take a, a PSA and it says 5, your doctor will say, okay, let's do a, a, a biopsy. He does the biopsy. He says it's cancerous. If your PSA is 5.0 to 30.0, your cancer is confined to your prostate. It's not out of the capsule yet. So don't let them fool you all. Let's go again. Next one. When the PSA reads... 50 to 100 PSA is telling me or the doctor that your cancer is moving out of the prostate gland into circulation. Once that PSA goes from go to 50, your cancer is now active and is moving out of the prostate gland into your circulatory system, moving into the bloodstream. Your cancer if it's right over here, it's still in your capsule. But it gets you scared and make you feel you're going to die. But once you can keep your PSA normal over here, 30, 5, your cancer can never kill you. And let them come and doubt what I'm saying now. Once you keep your PSA at 5 and 6 and 15 and 20 and it don't move, your cancer can never come out of the capsule because now you are looking to bring the PSA back down to fix your cancer. So don't let them fool you now. Follow me now. I want you all men to follow, man. Now, once your PSA goes to 50 and over, he, the doctor, knows now that your cancer is moving out of the capsule into your circulatory system. Now, when your PSA goes from 500 and up, your PSA, your cancer, is in your bones. Once your cancer reaches 500, even 100, your cancer is now in your bones from the prostate gland. Once you get to 500 and up, cancer is in your bones now. And once that PSA gets to 5,000, your cancer takes over, your bones causing paralysis. You can't walk no more. Men, listen, men. Listen, men. You understand? Listen, men. Once your PSA goes to 500 and up, now that cancer is going to take over your bones. 
And one that cancer take over your bones is going to cause paralysis because you can't walk. And you're going to die long term, eventually. You're going to suffer too, before you die. It's going to eat up your bones. And you can't walk. You're going to die eventually. 5,000. Now, we had a patient who came to Grenada with a PSL 5,225. And we did a video with the brother showing the exact numbers because he was, oxy, he was on oxycodone. You know what oxycodone is? Mm -hmm. Uncle? Painkillers. Pain and oxycodone gets you constipated because they did not know how to bring down this gentleman's PSA. So this gentleman flew all the way from California, he's from Ghana, and came to Grenada. And in two weeks, two weeks, the first week, his PSA dropped from 5,225 to 1,260. And in the second week, his PSA dropped from 1,260 to 5,000. 160. He's still living up to this day. Not taking any oxycodone. And his cancer was in his bones. God is great. Herbs. Diet. No oxycodone. See what I'm saying? So we did a video with the brother in Grenada with some other doctors who was in Grenada, who was surprised too. And we showed the, the, the results of the gentleman's PSA. But because the gentleman was from the, the, what do you call the, the people in Ghana? Uh -huh. From the, you know, um, the, the queen, the queen and them, uh -huh. kings and queens. Queen. We had to <clears throat> remove him from the video. But it's there, with his face. So that's factual, right? So we know for a fact that once your PSA goes to 5,000, that PSA is in your bones. And it's going to cause you to can't walk. Paralysis. So the key, men, is to keep your PSA at this number over here. Right here. Or down here. Down here. You won't get to get up here. Because once it starts to move, you, it's going to get into your bones. It's going to start to come into the capsule. Now, let me understand. Make you understand these things, you know. Follow me. Now, you can have a PSA can be 2.50 and there can be cancer in your prostate gland. So you can have a low PSA and still have prostate cancer. They don't tell you all that. Huh? And your PSA can be 25.0 and you don't have to have cancer in the, in, the, in, the, in the prostate gland. And that's factual. So, when you go to a PSA of more than 5, the doctor will take a biopsy. But if you're 2.50, he don't take a biopsy, but you can still have cancer in your prostate gland either. Right there too. See, so they're confusing. Because you can have a PSA of 2.50 and there can be prostate cancer. And you can have a PSA of 25 and there can be no prostate cancer. Or you can have a PSA of 25 and have prostate cancer also. You follow? See? So, let's look at the PSA this year. When a doctor do a, take a PSA, he's taking out 12 pieces of tissues from your prostate gland. Right or wrong, uncle? 12 pieces of <coughs> tissues from your prostate. Now, if you have cancer in your prostate gland, and the cancer is intact in the lobes, huh, in the right and left lobe of the prostate gland, and he goes and he removes 12 pieces of tissues from your prostate gland, he can, in turn, disturb your cancer and cause your cancer to come out of the capsule, moving out into the bloodstream. And they cannot doubt that either. They know that for a fact. But that's all they know. So, in the medical system, there should be left invasive ways of finding out if a man has prostate cancer than the, than the biopsies. See? The biopsy also gives you bleeding from the rectum or blood in the urine. See? Just to find out if you have prostate cancer. You see? What I do, 
I said, I said to you, don't make your PSA go up. Keep it down. Because the higher the PSA is the more detrimental the cancer, if it's there. The higher the PSA is the more your prostate is going to swell and cause you to have obstruction of urination, of urine. Follow me now. Let's go. So, your PSA can be 2.50 and there can be cancer in the prostate gland. And your PSA can be 25.0 and there's no cancer in the prostate. So let me tie you all up now. Let's look at herbs. These herbs we use to shrink a swollen prostate gland. BPH, B9, prostatic hypoplasia in the medical system. Now when you have an enlarged prostate gland, what the medical system do? They put a catheter in your penis because you can't pee. So if you can't pee, as we said before, your prostate gland is stuck under the ureter that carries the urine. So it is not part of the urinary system, but it can give you troubles there because of where it is, it is located. So what I do, when we get older as men, our prostate grows. So I'm talking to the young brothers. Don't abuse sex because you will have troubles in the prostate long term. You know what I mean? And if you don't have no sex either, troubles in the prostate too. So too much sexual activity can cause prostate troubles. And no sexual activity can cause prostate troubles too. So once a man past the age of 30, he should never have sex every day. He will kill the prostate. And you have to learn how to massage your prostate gland. To strengthen the prostate gland. Because when you get older, it shrinks, it, 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 it grows, sorry. And you in turn have to learn how to shrink it. Because once it grows, it's going to stop the flow of your urine. And the doctor going to put a catheter in your penis. So you can't, you can't have no sex. Sex dead. <laughs> <laughs> because you have to walk with a bag. Lots of men have that problem now. Lots of men. Have a catechin in the penis because for two years they carry a catechin in the penis. Why? Because your doctor didn't know how to shrink your prostate gland. Let's show you how to do that now. Follow me. A white sage shrinks the prostate gland, preventing inflammation. So palmetto prevent the, the five alpha reductase from converting into dihydrotestosterone, which is the carpet of prostate cancer. God is great, He put herbs on earth for everything. White sage. And nettle root shrinks the prostate gland. Supper metal prevents the prostate from becoming bigger or preventing enlargement of the prostate gland, but it also prevents the 5 alpha reductase that enzyme from converting into dihydrotestosterone, which causes men to get prostate cancer long term. So, supper metal doesn't shrink your prostate gland. That's false information. It prevents the prostate from becoming enlarged, but it don't shrink the prostate. But it prevents the enzyme 5 alpha reductase from converting into dihydrotestosterone, which can cause we men, our men, us men, prostate to swell, become enlarged. So you put you in a program for two to six months. And in two to six months, your prostate come back to the normal size. You don't have to put a catheter in your penis. Follow me now. Let's go. Mark the herbs down, men. Women, mark the herbs down for your husband or your man. Corinzonia. It's a herb used for circulation, for what, what, what we call vascular integrity. Corinzonia reduces congestion in the prostate eh? and prevents dribbling and prevents prostate inflammation. Prevention is what I teach. Corinzonia reduces congestion in the prostate gland and prevents what dribbling? When men have the prostate trouble, they get to dribble. It prevents dribbling and prevents prostate inflammation. So all these herbs, some of them is anti-inflammatory, some of them is antiseptic, some of them is diuretics, so they make you pee. So while some herbs is shrinking the prostate gland, some herbs are going to help you to pee, making you pee right properly. Follow me. But they know about that, though. Let's look at men's sexual health. When you have prostate cancer or you have prostate enlargement, you're going to have sexual troubles. Men, a lot of us do. A lot of women do too when they pass the age of 50. 
with hormones, estrogen levels drop. They don't have the feeling for sex no more. See? Testosterone drops. We have the same troubles as men. But we have to keep the reproductive system working well. Hmm? So the woman could be nice and happy. <laughs> yeah, that's what I'm saying. Follow me now. So, if there is an enlarged prostate gland, these are the herbs we use for BPH. B9 prostatic hypoplasia. We shrink the prostate gland. But we put you on a program. So from the 10th of January, 10th of February of 2020, as we have women on programs now, we have men on programs too. So they don't see you. You don't lose your prostate gland. You follow me? See? We have to prevent it. We have to prevent prostate cancer. We have to prevent prostate enlargement. See? So from the 10th of February 2020, men, go on the program. The program is for what? Six weeks. I want you to follow the program. We are putting it together for you. And you will see a difference if you have trouble in the prostate, you're going to pee well. If you have prostate cancer, you're going to see a difference. If your PSA is high, it's going to drop. I could guarantee you that. Follow my program. I'll call your blood. Follow me. See? So once you have trouble in the prostate gland, you lose your prostate gland, you have no sex and it's gone. Now what they do in the medical system, they give you a loop run, they give you Prosca, or they remove the prostate gland. And because they know for a fact, when they give you loop on a Prosca, these are what we call hormones, hormone therapy. They remove your testicles. They castrate you. Because they know better. When they remove your testicles, your testicles is what makes your sperm. Right or wrong, old, uh, 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 uncle? Right. right. Right? But your prostate gland is supposed to secrete that prostatic fluid to get it to the testicles. So your, to your, to your, so your, so your sperm will have good velocity. Once you remove the, the testicles, your adrenal glands on top of your kidney goes into overdrive because he says testicles is gone. So now because the testicles is gone and he produces testosterone, I in turn now have to produce excessive amount of that hormone now because the testicles are not doing it anymore. So the doctor gives you a double whammy. When he removes your testicles, and then you have what you call reverse ejaculation, meaning that you're feeling like you want to ejaculate, but it's going back up in your bladder. They don't tell you that, though. So once he removes your testicles, he puts your adrenal glands into overdrive. And then your adrenal glands are producing more testosterone. And he knows for a fact that your cancer feeds on testosterone. So once the adrenal glands, Start producing tons of testosterone now because your testicles is gone. He said, oh, I will give you a hormone to block the receptors. So what he does, he injects you with another hormone and then automatically your breasts start to get big like a woman. Now, you start to have boobs like a woman. And ain't no man want to live like that. See what I'm saying? So that's the reason why I teach prevention. So what you have past the age of 30, you have to look out because you have men, your brothers now, 25, 27, 29, suffering from impotence, ED, erectile dysfunction, blood flow is not good. So let's look at some herbs that will help with that because the program will deal with blood flow, sexual health for men, red ginseng, ashwagandha, maca, Katuba, ginkgo, honey goat weed. Mark them down for me, men. A woman, mark it down for your man. Red ginseng, ashwagandha, maca, katuba, ginkgo, honey goat weed. Maria Puma, strong man back from Jamaica. Cinnamon. To clean up the arteries. Babande from Grenada. Garlic. Gin ginger. Heart and for the heart. To strengthen the heart. Because if you want to have good sexual health, you must have good heart health. 
If you want to have good sexual health, men, you must have good heart health. Otherwise, you're going to take Viagra and you're going to stop your heart. You have to have good heart health. So this herb strengthens the heart muscle and gives it a stronger contraction. The contraction of your heart becomes stronger now so that the blood can flow to the penis. Heart on. Huh? <laughs> Men. Corn silk. And the reason for this herb, this herb, look right over here. See it here? See it here? Corn silk. Corn baby cotton and grenade. Hey, what it does? It removes excessive amount of uric acid. And it acts as a what? Diuretic. Preventing inflammation. Not only in the bladder, but in the prostate gland. It is what we call an antiseptic to the bladder. But because the prostate gland is tucked under the ureter, it removes excessive amount of water. Excessive amount of uric acid. But we don't use that. We take, we, we peel the corn, we throw it away. Because we don't know the significance of these, of these plants. Share the video. Before they delete my video, you can't share it no more. Wonderful. Let's look at them. Now, all these herbs should be mixed together. Men, the 10th of February, all these herbs should be mixed together. And I want you men to start the program on the 10th of February. And I want you to continue <coughs> to the 21st of March, 2020. And I want you men, brothers, to stay away from all flesh foods for six weeks. No ox tail, no beef, no pork, no chicken, none of them. No cheese, no eggs, no milk. Huh? Especially if you are prone to coming up with prostate troubles long term. You understand? Because it will happen to you eventually. So don't think you're going to sex all the time. Because I'm telling you, it's going to happen. It's going to happen. Because if you don't have no sex as a man, you're getting older and you lose the ability to have to function, you will have to massage your prostate gland to get rid of the excessive amount of sperm or fluid from the prostate gland coming to your penis hole. So it is very imperative that you eat the foods now that will keep you going, like Abraham at 90 years old, still could perform. You know what I mean? That's the key. So if you don't have sex, if you become imp impotent and you don't have sex, you're going to lose your prostate too. Because now your prostate is secreting that prostatic fluid and because you can't have an erection, it can't come up, huh? dead like Lazarus, your prostate starts to secrete that fluid and it's saying, huh, <laughs> I can't get up. So what's happening to you now? You, the fluid can't go nowhere. Because he can't get up to push it out in the sperm. So your prostate keeps on secreting. And he's saying, you saying, get up. Get up, boy, get up. Can't get up. And then all of a sudden, this prostatic fluid stays in the prostate gland long term. And cause the prostate to become enlarged. Because it can't move into the testicles. Men, brothers, have to learn that. Because it's killing more black brothers than any other race. Factual. Too much sex would also <clears throat> damage your prostate gland. It's just like drinking too much alcohol. Too much alcohol is no good. Alcohol in moderation is not bad. But too much alcohol to get drunk is bad for you. Too much sex is no good either. Because when you're having sex on a regular basis, and when you're 30 years old, and you keep on shooting that perm out, you make this perm every three days, you want to have sex four or five times a week, you're crazy. Because now, you are working your prostate excessively. And the prostate has to keep on secreting the prostatic fluid because you're having sex four times a week. <laughs> and I, say, I could kill the vagina, man. You can't kill the vagina. Keep on shooting that prostatic fluid outside it. And all of a sudden, your prostate gland become mushy and all of a sudden, he can't secrete that prostatic fluid no more. And you start to have impotent or ED. You come up like that. And the woman says, come inside. Open the door. And she open the door for you and you come inside. And you go down, up. You're going, <laughs> you're going, you're dead. Because you kill the prostate gland. And you kill the, you kill the veins. 
You kill the arteries. Here. So, right over here. Penis. Right over here. Penial artery. Right over here. The tadia. Now, once you have an erection, the blood's supposed to come into the penis. Everything is blood flow. And the, the, the pineal artery is supposed to keep the blood in your penis. Right or wrong, Ashanti? Right. There is a valve called the stadia valve. The valve is supposed to close so that when the blood goes into the penis, the blood can have a good erection, hard, like a rock. Because some men come and say, Mr. Dells, I, I get an erection, but I can't keep it because, the, because the blood is coming back out. So once the valve is not closed properly, and because of plaque in the walls of the arteries, automatically, when the blood is in the penis, and the, uh, the artery, penis artery right here, and the valve opens a bit, you get an erection, but because the valve is all messed up, the, the blood comes back out, and you go in, but you go down the road. And she goes, <laughs> you ain't ready yet. She laugh at you. Because you feel you're macho. You see what I'm saying? So what we do is we use the program that we gonna have from the 10th of February for men to clean up the arteries, clean it up, work on the heart, strengthen the heart muscle, help the prostate to secrete that fluid, take care of the prostate gland, move the blood into the circulatory system, and then you gonna see a difference in the six weeks as a man, especially older men. Check me here, son, son. Prostate cancer. Prostate cancer. Over here. Prostate cancer. Prostate enlargement. Prostate cancer. Prostate enlargement. Prostate cancer. Prostate cancer. Prevention of troubles in the prostate. Prevent it. Don't get it. You must take zinc. Because zinc is found more in the prostate gland. Pumpkin seeds, sesame seeds, all the seeds have lots of zinc found in the prostate. If you want the prostate to become enlarged, you don't, you don't take that. If you want to shrink your prostate, you must take amino acids. You must take them. Because in studies, amino acids shrink the prostate gland. Shrink it. You have to shrink it properly. See? So in the prostate gland is lots of zinc. So every time we men ejaculate, we ejaculate what? Zinc from the prostate gland. Every time we men ejaculate, we ejaculate zinc. If we don't put it back, we're going to have troubles in the prostate gland. So you must take zinc. You must take a men's multivitamin that have herbs like soap and metal to keep your prostate gland healthy. So you can satisfy your wife or your woman long term. But if you have prostate cancer, we have to know so we can know which program to put you on from February. If you have BPH, we have to know so we can know what herbs to, to put you on. If you want to prevent prostate cancer and prostate enlargement and prostatitis, a trouble in the urinary system, we have to know so we can know what herbs to put you on. You follow me? I teach prevention. You understand? Because lots of young brothers is coming up with prostate cancer. A liar, Shante, 49 years old, 48 years old, never happened before. What's happening? Because the food we eat. You follow me? We don't clean. So I, I put programs together for men, women, children to clean and prevent these diseases. That's what I do. I do it with prevention. <clears throat> Not get it and come and tell me to fix it. It will take a longer time because lots of people don't have discipline. To change the lifestyle, to change how they eat, they can't fix nothing. It's always good to prevent. We have four ladies coming from St. Lucia. They're amazed. They're losing weight because they're on the program. So we put programs together for people, men, men, to keep the prostate gland and the reproductive system healthy so that you will never ever fall down when you get inside. And the woman has to laugh at you. <laughs> You're crazy. Blessed love. And don't forget, we are, we, are, we, are, we, are, we are here in Ambrosia till Saturday. Um, we're living back to Greenland on Sunday, and we have, we just had our, our little, our little um, setback with our, our, our ChristyBooks.biz with our formulas, and all these, you know, we did to be with people, you know what happens? 
you have ups and downs. So um, be, be, um, be very patient. Be sending some, some products out tomorrow. Um, so if you want to order for um, some of the stuff, you're going to go to K-R-I-S-T-Y-B-W-K-S dot B-I-Z and 718-469-0985. I'm Rosia Health or Nikki Lane. Um, she's watching. She can put her information there. But programs are being put together for brothers so that you can save your reproductive system. You understand? Instead of going to these people, let them remove your prostate gland. And when they remove it, you can't come to me no more because I can't help you. Because you're dead like Lazarus and you cannot be resurrected. Bless and love. K-R-I-S-T-Y B-W-K-S dot B-I-Z Christy Books dot biz and um, um, 1473-421-9604 consultations or 718-469-0985 Ambrosia Health and you can get all the stuff that you need for the program starting on the 10th of May so I'll give you all men time to build up yourself because you can have all the money in the world and you don't have no health you don't have no wealth because health is wealth so you can have all the money in the, in the world and you let them in a bed dying from cancer in the prostate and saying, boy, I could have gone and spend $50, $100 to save my life. I did not do it. Because why? You were not taught the principle of health. Bless and love and give thanks and praises to the Most High. Thanks. See everybody on Sunday in Grenada. I'll be back in Grenada on Sunday. Give thanks. Bless and love to everybody. We're going to mix the herbs together. We're going to take a teaspoon to a cup of hot water. We're going to cover it for five minutes. And we're going to strain it and drink three cups per day. And we're going to follow the program properly. So when you call Ashante, you ask Ashante, you, um, you want to tell him which program you want to have. If you want to have the one for prostate cancer. If you want to have the one for prostate enlargement. Or if you want the one for preventing troubles in the men's reproductive system and for your sexual health. Okay? Shante is going to take care of you. Right, Bridget? Yes. Bless and love, Definitely. man. Definitely. Uncle, go take care of it, right, Uncle? Oh, yes. <laughs> Blessed black people. Yeah, man.